Hello and welcome to the next part in our Simple Science series where we take the complex conversations and topics in Formula One and simplify them. Today we're going to be looking at fuels and lubricants and of course that means our title partner Petronas. We're also joined again by our F1 Power Unit Director Hal Thomas. Hal, thanks for joining us. Uh, pleasure to talk to you. With Petronas, obviously they supply a whole range of different products but let's start talking about petrol. Um, there's lots of different substances that are flammable or combustible, but what is it about petrol that makes it such a viable fuel? Petrol's great for a number of reasons. Um, if I start talking first of all about energy density. So petrol's got a very high energy density. Um, and when you think what that means is the energy per unit volume is very high. So when you've got a fuel which you're carrying around, as you are in your car, or in our case, our F1 car, the greater the energy density, the more you can take with you for a given amount of volume. So that makes it great. Petrol also releases its energy very, very quickly. So if you compare it with some other fuels, maybe coal, um, maybe charcoal on your, on your barbecue, that's a very slow release of the energy that's in the fuels, whereas petrol will just will go up very, very quickly as you know if you've ever used petrol to light your barbecue. Please don't try that at home. <laughs> the other thing with petrol, which is perhaps counterintuitive to that, is that it's relatively stable. So for a fuel, it's actually quite stable. You can store um, petrol uh, at room temperatures, at normal pressures, and it's okay. It, it's, it's perfectly, um, well, not perfectly, but it's, it's relatively safe for that, and for a fuel, very safe. So that means, again, when you're transporting the petrol from, um, from place to place, you're storing it in barrels or in a garage, relatively safe. If you compare that with some other fuels where you have to keep them chilled, you have to keep them at high pressure. So it does really make petrol a very, very good fuel for, um, for internal combustion engines. One of the things that I found fascinating looking back through the 70 years of Formula One, and in fact, going back to the, the dawn of Grand Prix racing was the mixtures of fuel of ethanol and methanol and acetone. And then Formula One brings the regulations in. But one of the questions that fans always ask is how much difference is there between the, the petrol that we use in our Formula One cars and the petrol that you get at your forecourt and your petrol pump? They're Surprisingly similar, but, but also very different. Um, the regulations that you, that you mentioned, the regulations are very clear that the fuel we use has to be recognisable as petrol. Um, and that's a, that's a great thing for Petronas, because it means that the work that they do with us, the work that the understanding that they get from doing that work is transferable to their products for the road. But at the same time, our fuel is different to what you get out of the pump. Um, probably on a global um, uh, property, the main thing that's different is the octane rating. So our octane rating is higher than what you would get out of the pump. So what is octane rating? It's a measure of how easy it is for the fuel to combust. So a higher octane rating means that it's harder for the fuel to combust, which again you might think is wrong with an engine that you'd really want it to produce this power. If you remember back to the conversations we had about the four-stroke cycle and about knock, what we don't want is for the fuel to um, detonate and combust uh, in an uncontrolled manner. We want to be in control of it. So in these engines where they're high pressure, high temperature, high load, we want a higher octane rating so that we can be in control of that combustion, not the fuel in control of it. We talked about the, uh, the, the fuels and the Premax that we put into our Formula One car, but Petronas supplies with a lot of other different fluid technology solutions in, uh, in our engine and our gearbox. Can you just take us through, you know, inside of the engine, obviously there's a lot of high temperatures and a lot of friction, but where is the oil being used and, and why, why is it needed there? The oil is there to, and it helps us in, in two things really. It helps us incredibly with the reliability of the engine. But it does also help us with the performance of the engine. So if you imagine within the engine, um, we've got a lot of surfaces that move, a lot of rubbing surfaces, a lot of metal on metal contact. Um, and if you try to do that contact without any lubrication, you know, if you can imagine it, even just loading yourself up like that, you can, there's real friction. It's, it, yeah, you can add some lubrication in there and it becomes a lot simpler. I feel, I feel like Mr. Miyagi there just doing <laughs> Where you've got those, those surfaces rubbing, what you, what you need is for them to, rub, to, to run across each other without getting stuck, without galling. And that's what the oil can bring you. 
And if we again go back to our four-stroke cycle and we go back to what we were talking about with the, the, the piston and uh, the forces from those four um, elephants on top of the piston and that being transferred through the conrod into the crankshaft to create the torque. Well, if you think of that joint between the conrod and the crankshaft and the forces that are being pushed through that, that's metal on metal contact there. And the only thing that's stopping that completely seizing up is the oil from, uh, from Petronas. And that, that thickness of that oil at that point can be as low as one micron, which, um, as I'm sure you know, is about a hundredth of the thickness of a human hair. Well, unfortunately, um, hair is not exactly my specialist subject. But what, what was that again? A mi- uh, uh, how many microns? Just a single micron of the oil between the conrod shell and the crankshaft. It is scary. When you, when you talk about the, the, the temperatures, if you think about just when you're uh, drilling a wall at home to put a picture up, and if you accidentally touch the drill bit against your hand, you, you, know, you realise how hot that is. Uh, I know last time you were talking about how many times the pistons go up and down in the blink of an eye. Um, it, it's incredible to think that those temperatures are taking place in each one of those cylinders. And if you think about all the sliding and moving surfaces that we've got involved, in that piston going up and down the cylinder and turning that into the torque in the crankshaft, without oil, we'd be nowhere. So, Cintium in the engine, lubricating all of those joints, keeping it nice and cool, reducing the friction. What about then as we move back in the car uh, to the gearbox? Um, there's, there's a lot of shearing and, and all of the gears rubbing against one another there. Yeah. Is, what, what solutions do Petronas provide us? In a very similar manner to, to the way that we work on the engine, um, Petronas work on the on the gearbox. It's all about matching the lubrication regime with the optimum lubricant to do that. So within a gearbox, as you've rightfully noted, the, the sort of um, between gears, some of those um, friction regimes are very different to what we were just talking about, about, some rotational and some different sliding regimes, different forces. And really it's all about matching beautifully um, those regimes and the forces and the slides and the speeds um, to uh, an oil that can work beautifully in those um, those locations. You, you know, said about putting your hands together with friction. That friction is completely different from that friction. In terms of matching a, a lubricant that will make that work, especially if you then think that maybe um, uh, maybe that's ten times the force that's pushing it together. Rather, it's, 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 so yeah, it's matching those forces the motions and getting all that to work beautifully with your, with your lubricant. Now, one, one of the things that really surprised me when I first started in Formula One and I found out that the, the, the battery pack, um, the, the ERS pack, we all know that when we charge and discharge our mobile phones, you know, when, when we're on all our, our phones all the time, they heat up. Now, some laps of, of a Formula One circuit, as we discussed before, there's an incredible amount of energy that's going into that battery pack. And these coolant technologies that actually help the performance of that. Can you explain a little bit more? There is still some waste energy from the batteries that isn't 100% efficient. You do get heat created by them. Um, And what we need to do is take that heat away um, from the batteries and get that heat to a radiator where coolant can be cooled and then it goes back round again in in a circuit. The product that is in the uh, in the battery as the coolant is a uh, very specific ba- uh, coolant because it's in contact with the live parts of the battery. So if it was in tall conductive, it would short your battery pack out in the blink of an eye. Um, so it has to be um, non-conductive, um, it has to transfer the, um, the, the heat very well. It's quite a different um, um, challenge for Petronas to, to make that, um, that fluid work. If we look at the, the different solutions, we've only talked about three, but the partnership of Petronas goes back, was one of, one of the longest partnerships that we've had with the, the actual team. How closely do we, we collaborate and how quickly can, can they react to some of our engineering and mechanical changes on the engine? How, how quickly can things come about? We do work incredibly closely with the, with the team from Petronas and we work with the team in Brackley, we work with the team in Brixworth, we work with them in Malaysia and the Petronas guys in Italy as well. All very closely collaborating. Um, and we have, um, although we're not the experts, we have a good knowledge uh, of where they're going and what the directions are uh, on the, on the um, lubricants and fuel side. And similarly for them, they're not the experts, but they know in the direction in which we are traveling with, with the power unit. And what that means is we can really start to match and understand 
if we know that they found some performance but we need to change the engine in this way to unlock it, we're able to do that and vice versa. And those conversations and that partnership is, is what we do. That's how we work uh, and that's how we make the progress that we do. How long does it take for them to engineer a new fuel when we bring in our upgraded power units? The relationship that we've got now, um, we, it's, just, it's a constant thing. You're just constantly changing, constantly moving. Probably the, the best idea I can give you is, is from some of the early days work that we did. When we first got introduced to them, when the partnership started, they went from, from not having an oil that worked in our engine to having one in under four months. And that was from the early days of our partnership. And nowadays where that partnership is that much closer, we really understand how to work with one another. The development rate is, is very, very good. What about with, with the fuel side? Is it a case that they just develop one fuel per season or are they working on multiple different fuels? We test um, an awful lot of fuels. Petronas are making a lot of fuels and we're testing a lot of them. And they can be very small tweaks, just trying to make sure that we've got the match between the engine and the fuel perfect. Over the course of the years, the number of fuels that we are testing is, is in the hundreds. We're now in a position where it will be one race fuel for this season, for this year. But the amount of work, the number of fuels that have been blended by Petronas and tested at Bricksworth in order to get there, um, it's, it's a very, very high number. Just to go back to our, our road cars, when, when sometimes we watch car shows and they're doing an oil change, or perhaps if, if any of our fans at home have done a, an oil change on their car or their motorbike, sometimes when you take the dipstick out or you have a look at the engine or the sump, you're looking for those little metallic bits. Sometimes there's like a little magnet in the bottom of the sump. I'm guessing that the tests that we do in Formula One are a little bit more scientific than that. Just give us an idea of, of the tests that we do trackside to, to monitor the health of the power unit. Whenever we take an oil sample from the power unit over the course of a race weekend, it goes off to the Petronas lab, which is a mobile lab that travels with the team and is in there in the back of the garage. And small portions of that oil are then burnt off and are tested to see what is in the, that oil. When we were talking about the, the rubbing, the, the, uh, the Mr Miyagi, um, when we're talking about all of that, even though the lubrication is working very well, there will be small amounts of wear. And, and when I say small, we're talking about parts per million in the, in the oil. So it's, it's very, very small um, um, amounts. But using the technology that Petronas have, we can measure that. And we can plot out if in the power unit there are changes in those wear metals, and we can see which is the metal that's wearing. So maybe it's an aluminium that we're seeing, or maybe it's a steel that we're seeing, um, or maybe other elements that, that we're picking up. How is the power unit working? And is it working like normal? Do we have a normal low level of wear? Or maybe something's going on that isn't quite right, that means that, that wear level has, has changed slightly. Um, and from there, we can then go back and try and diagnose what's happened and, and hopefully catch things ahead of them becoming catastrophic. In general, we've, we've looked at the different solutions that we use within the car, so the, the, the fuel to power it, the oil in the engine to keep it lubricated, and the tutela as well to keep everything cool. Just to, to wrap up, how important is that relationship with Petronas to the overall success of the team? You know, we've had six championships now, uh, and Petronas has been working with us for, well, best part of 10 years, over 10 years. How important is that relationship? Like any high-performing team, um, the parts of that team have to operate like a well-oiled machine. Um, as you say, uh, Pet Petronas have been with us for all that time. They help to provide reliability to the power unit and to the chassis through the gearbox, and they've helped to provide performance in both ways as well, through the PU and the chassis. Without their contribution, you don't have the reliability and you don't have the performance, you don't have the opportunity to win races. And if you don't win races, you don't have very little opportunity of winning those championships. So they're a key part of our performance. Well, look, Hal, thank you very much for, for taking us a little bit deeper into that power unit and that relationship with Petronas. Um, it's been a fantastic insight, and I hope the fans at home enjoy all of that information. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Hal.